Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Let Us Reason uh, video series. Uh, we're still unpacking the Tawheed dilemma, showing and demonstrating, even from the Quran, that the Quran actually does not teach that Allah is one in person and one, uh, one in essence and one in person. And this time we've been talking about how the Quran uh, exhibited our Lord Jesus Christ and demonstrated him to us as someone who is not even near what our Muslim friends wants him to be. That's right. With me here is Sam Shamoun. Sam, right. last time we were unpacking chapter 4, verse 171, where it says clearly that Jesus yes. is a word of Allah and a spirit of him. That's right. Yeah, yes, and yes. you uh, basically says, if Allah existed without his word, then we have a problem. That's right. May the Lord Jesus Christ be magnified through us in the power of the Holy Spirit and protect us from error in Jesus' name, because we need his grace to do justice to these topics. In the previous session, we were unpacking chapter 4, verse 171 and its implications. There it says that Jesus is the Messiah, and we'll unpack that in future sessions, God willing. The son of Mary, because he was conceived to Mary while she was a virgin by the power of the Spirit, then it also says that he's apostle of Allah, which we would agree that he's apostle of God the Father, and his word, which he cast down to Mary, clear affirmation of his pre-human existence and a spirit from him, which he would have been if he proceeded from God out of God's own presence, he would have been <clears throat> a spirit because he hadn't taken flesh. Now, I said that Allah's word, and Muslims would have to agree, is uncreated because Allah has always existed with his word. So if Jesus is the word of Allah and the word of Allah is uncreated, then Jesus must be uncreated. Therefore, he is no mere creature. He is God, co-equal to Allah in essence, who became flesh, which is exactly what John teaches in the Gospel of John. Now, there are ways in which Muslims get around this. They'll tell you he's not the word of God because he himself is the word. They'll say that he's called the word of God because Allah created him by his word, by his command, kun, right. and kun. But the, the verse doesn't say that. Exactly. Now, what they will try to do is they'll try to go to chapter 3, verse 59 of the Quran, where it says, the likeness, the similitude of Jesus before Allah is like the similitude of Adam, whom he created from dust, and he said, be, and he is. So they'll say, see? Jesus is this creation is likened to that of Adam in that Adam was from dust and Allah said be to him and he was. That's why Jesus is called the word of God. Well, that verse in itself provides refutation of that argument. Understand what is being said. Because Jesus is created by the command of God, he can be called the word of God. But in 359, it says that Adam was created by the word of God, his command. In fact, in 1640, it says basically everything is created by the command of Allah, by the command of God, the word of Allah. If that argument is true, that means Adam is also the word of Allah. You are also the word of Allah. I'm also the word of Allah. But nowhere does a Quran call anyone except Jesus the That's word right. of Allah. Right. So if that argument is true, is valid, then Adam should have been called the word of Allah because he's created by Allah's word, his command. Yeah. But he's not. Showing that Jesus is not called the word of Allah because God created him by his command. He's called the word of Allah because Muhammad, again, is hearing Christians. That's right. Identifying Jesus as the Logos of God, the word of God, Yohanine Christology, John chapter 1 and 1 John chapter 1 and Revelation 19, 13. He's hearing that. He's adopting it with the hopes that Christians will now take his message seriously because he's saying, look, see, I affirm what you affirm. He is the word of God. Not realizing and affirming that part of Christian theology, he pretty much destroys the entire foundation of his religion in that he ends up affirming Jesus must be eternal, one with God, inseparable from him, and not a mere creature. Another related point to that, why a Muslim cannot tell you what the word of God means in reference to Jesus. <clears throat> Many people may not be aware of this, but you are aware of this. Chapter 3, verse 7 of the Quran speaks of two sets of passages in the Quran. Chapter 3, verse 7 says, there are clear passages of the Quran. They That's are right. the mother of the book. Foundational, focus on them. But there are another set of passages that are said to be ambiguous, unclear, yeah. right? So there are two sets of passages in the Quran. One clear, focus on them. The other unclear. And then it says only those who have a disease in their heart will focus on the unclear passages in chapter 3, verse 7. But then it says only Allah knows their meaning. Now, many people may not be aware of this, but I encourage Christians, even Muslims, to look up Tafsir ibn Kathir, the abridged English translation, which they can read online for free. You can go to Q Tafsir, T A F S A S I R, Q T A F S I R dot com. Go and read what he says about the first 80 verses of chapter 3. According to all the Muslim commentators that I know of, 
they claim that the first 80 verses of chapter 3 were composed in response to Muhammad's debate with the Najrani Christians, Christians yep, from Najran. An apology against them. So yep. he composed these 80 verses, which they believe was by Wahi, revelation from God, in response. According to Ibn Kathir, chapter 3, verse 7 was deliberately composed to refute the Christians using chapter 4, verse 171, where Jesus is said to be the word of Allah and the spirit of Allah to prove the divinity of Christ. In other words, the reason why Muhammad said there are unclear passages is because when the Christians started saying to Muhammad, hey, Muhammad, you said that Jesus is the word of Allah and he's the spirit of Allah. In fact, the two honorific titles given to Jesus in Islamic theology, he's the word of Allah, Karimat Allah, Ruh Allah, spirit of Allah. They used those very titles to prove that Jesus is God. They told him, wait, if he's the word of Allah and the spirit of Allah, then he's God. So what was Muhammad's response? Oh, those are unclear passages. Don't focus on them, only Allah knows their meaning. How convenient when the Christians started using Muhammad's own words against them to prove that Jesus is God, he came up with the excuse, their meanings are unclear, we don't know what it means, only Allah knows what they mean. Now here's the dilemma though. If only Allah knows what it means for Jesus to be the Word of God, how can a Muslim tell me what it means? That's right, and that's what we're noticing. I don't know if you're noticing this lately. It seems like the Muslims want to put in, a, in the mouth of their God and the Quran and their prophet oftentimes yes. things that they themselves didn't even say. You can't even find records of it. Yeah, like in one of the sessions where it says about the spirit. When Muhammad is asked about the spirit, he goes, only a little knowledge is given concerning his identity. So Muhammad is silent about who the spirit is, yet Muslims tell us it's Gabriel. That's Muhammad right. is silent on what it means for Jesus to be the word of God because he doesn't know because he knows he just made a mistake because he affirmed the deity of Christ even though he didn't want to. And he says, well, don't focus on those statements. They're unclear. And yet Muslims tell us what it means even though Muhammad said he doesn't know, only God knows. So leave the meaning to God. Amen. And uh, that's basically why we call those uh, series Dilemma, because it's one dilemma after another. <laughs> and uh, our job is to really try to help our Muslim uh, friends. I mean, we're not here to mock anyone. We're here to help you see for yourself that oftentimes what you think is not what the facts are about. And um, Tam, yes. uh, what else do you think we can be talking about in the following sessions? Oh, well, we have a lot more to talk about in regards to what the Quran says about Jesus that elevates him above creation and far superior to, to Muhammad. So there's a lot more in the series, so stick around. And just I encourage uh, those of you, uh, I'll be doing with Sam uh, oftentimes uh, Facebook Live, so uh, be sure to go to my Facebook uh, page, which is alfadi.sira, and check out those live sessions that I'll be doing with Sam, all previous ones as well. You can also go to our YouTube channel, Sira International, uh, Sira International and uh, become a subscriber as well. Until we meet again, have a blessed day. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. Also, hit the bell so that you don't miss future videos. And please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash Sira International. And together, we can introduce Muslims to the gospel of Jesus Christ.